on Ocean Avenue, and I actually want to have oh, some sorry, prepared. Just repeat your name again. My name is Anita Boat. Uh, I had some prepared remarks. I actually want to pick up on some of, some of the comments here. I want to start by saying I didn't know if these comments should have been directed solely to the mayor uh, or if there's a larger group. This isn't meant to offend anybody who wasn't included in any of this decision making. However, my first point out of four has to do with the traffic study. And rather than what I was going to say before, let me just ask a simple question. Was the traffic study done? I can't answer that. You'd have to ask either the public safety director or business administrator. Okay, could I have that on the record as a formal request for a tra uh, the status of if a traffic study was done and when, that, when and how that will be made available to the public? Just want to add one comment about the traffic study um, because last year this came up and I was in the audience when Dennis Sherman and um, the Save Ocean Avenue Committee put forward some alternative suggestions to the traffic plan that was being uh, presented then. He no sooner got the words out of his mouth when it was, where's the traffic study that you did? It seemed unfair and unnecessary at that point to say that fully well knowing that a community organization like that was not gonna have the resources to do a traffic study. There's an unfair and unbalanced distribution of power between the people sitting up here and the people sitting over here. You have the power, you have the resources, you have the authority that we don't. You have the authority to do a traffic study and so my, tra my question still stands to request a traffic study for um, this plan that's being put forward. The second point that I want to make is on safety, and I think we've all hit safety. In my heart, I want to believe that everything is being done for the safety of uh, our families, our residents, everybody that comes to the Jersey Shore. I have to think that each one of you, just like m my family and, and me as we were, and the, as, as the gentleman before me commented, as we were riding our bikes, trying to go from the Renaissance down to uh, Pier Village, and all of a sudden we were thrown out on 36 to ride our bikes with young children on a portion of 36 that had no sidewalks. And the thought that went through my mind was, our city leaders were thinking about our safety when they put together this plan, which just makes me question now that based on that experience, you're asking us to trust you again and believe that our safety is at the heart of what um, you're proposing uh, right now. Um, and if all was said and done, if the plan that's being suggested is that safe, why is it necessary to put specials on to monitor that property for added manpower for added use of resources. Now, there is a skeptic in me um, that just, just makes me think that it allows the city to say, we did everything possible to ensure safety for that inevitable lawsuit that we know is gonna happen because of the inevitable accident that we know that's going to happen. Uh, the third point that I want to make is about the process and my, disappointed with, my disappointment with how this process has been handled. It's my understanding uh, that the mayor used legal resources for the city to have the Green Acres statute interpreted in a way that allowed him not to have a public hearing on his proposed traffic plan. And as a matter of fact, I'm not, not even going to use the word proposed traffic plan anymore because I fully believe that this is the traffic plan that the mayor totally intended to implement regardless of what his constituents wants. He knows the process. He's a lawyer. He's been a public figure for years. He didn't have to turn to a lawyer to use our resources to read the fine print to find a loophole that was going to allow him to say, we don't need to have a, a public hearing. It's that, it's that lack of transparency that doesn't speak well for him 
and it's the kind of representation that I think is not what we as residents of this area um, deserve. That unequal distribution of power and unfair use of power was taken advantage by our lawyer, by our mayor. I work in education. That type of behavior is called bullying. And in this situation, perhaps it's most appropriate called, appropriately called political bullying. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you.